my name is Tara McGitz. I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Drinkwater and Goldstein, and this is one of a continuing series of videos on various topics uh, within the field, primarily of personal injury, but sometimes we stray outside of that, depending on what I'm interested in on a month-to-month -month basis um, or others in my office are interested in. This month, we're going to be talking about attractive nuisance which is a tort uh, or a basis for a civil lawsuit um, and, as, and how it relates to, uh, to children and personal injury. Um, you know, we all know that children uh, are hurt from time to time for a variety of reasons um, and that sometimes curiosity can lead uh, children into precarious situations where they might be caused to injure themselves. Um, and so there are going to be situations where you and or I as an adult, you know, we would see a danger that should be avoided. Children see adventure, something to be explored, something to, to look at or to climb over or climb into or walk across where you and I might say, no way, Jose, I'm not going anywhere near that. That's too dangerous. Um, and so the law acknowledges that the tendency of children is to not necessarily understand and recognize that something might be dangerous and could potentially cause injury to them. And so it imposes a special duty to protect children from the hazards that they may experience out in public um, in the areas where they might want to explore. And so New Jersey has adopted this principle, which is called the attractive nuisance doctrine. So uh, an attractive nuisance is any man-made construct present upon land, which may lure children and which can cause them bodily injury should they play, in, play on, in, or around it. So the certain attractions that come to mind immediately are going to be swimming pools, playground equipment, uh, artificial landscaping uh, uh, features, um, that might make your yard look rather nice, but may be uh, hazardous to children who don't understand that the feature is not a, a toy to be played with. Um, and so they can be dangerous and a child might not understand that. Um, so a heightened duty is opposed, imposed upon property owners who have items that will both attract children and present an element of harm. Uh, because they essentially induce children who don't know better to come onto the property, a property owner is expected to take certain precautions to address the potential for harm. For example, um, most towns have put into place a requirement that if you are going to have a swimming pool, a very attractive nuisance, um, that you are generally required to have a fence around either the pool or the yard in general, specifically to make it more difficult, if not impossible, for a random child to just come onto the property and make their way into the swimming pool. Um, because the CDC has identified that drowning is a leading cause of death for unintentional injuries uh, for kids who are aged one through four. Um, and there are unfortunately tragedies that occur where a child in that age range uh, does you know, drown in a swimming pool. Uh, Bodie Miller's uh, daughter is one of those uh, children. Uh, it was all over the news uh, a few years ago where their, his daughter had um, gone in, gotten into the pool, which was fenced in and was caused to drown. Um, and so that is exactly the reason why fencing is designed to be put in place to make it more difficult for children to get into those areas. Um, and so the elements of attractive nuisance that you wanna pay attention to and look at to determine whether or not there is an attractive nuisance is if the property owner knows or reasonably should know. In other words, if you have a swimming pool, the law expects that you, sh that you either know that you have an attractive nuisance or that you really should know. This isn't something that you can say if something were to happen. I had no idea. Yeah, you did. Um, because that's something that's likely to cause children to come onto the property because they want to swim in the swimming pool, especially if they don't have a swimming pool of their own. 
Um, in response, so element number two is in response to an artificial condition present upon the land. So uh, playgrounds are an artificial condition. So play equi playground equipment would be an artificial condition. So if you have a really, really sweet play yard setup that attracts children to come onto the property to play with it, that may be considered an attractive nuisance. Um, and then uh, third element, which the property owner knows or reasonably should know poses an unreasonable risk of death or serious bodily injury. Four, such that a child, because of their youth, do not discover the condition or realize the risk involved. I mean, how many times, if you are a parent or uh, have been around kids playing on the playground, have you had your hands up to your mouth, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, because the child is taking a risk that you think is an unreasonable risk that is likely to cause them harm. I know I have. Um, and then that the fifth element is that the property owner fails to take reasonable precautions to safeguard against the risk of injury. Um, now, there are commonly found nuisances. We talked about uh, pools and water features. Um, studies have suggested that an adult can drown from as little as six tablespoons of water. This number is less for a child. So water features on property, fountains, pools, wells, um, they can pose a huge risk to children who may want to splash around inside. Um, and they're not going to recognize the risk that they are taking. They just think that they're playing in water and having a good time. Um, so a swimming pool, which we've discussed, is probably the most common example of an attractive nuisance. Um, and we're getting into pool weather where the, the weather really, it, at least in New Jersey, in other parts of the country, it's always pool weather. <laughs> but that's not the case in New Jersey. So in New Jersey, we're getting into uh, water weather where pools are going to be opening up. People are going to be going down to the beach and to the shore, um, going to water parks and whatnot. And you know, that's really a, a, an area where being mindful of the dangers posed uh, with regards to a pool and other water feature um, really becomes important. As a pool owner, you could be liable even if children sneak into your pool without your consent. Um, so whether it's above ground, in ground, or a kiddie pool, you can reduce your risk by surrounding your pool area with a fence, installing a locking gate, preferably one with an audible alarm, and covering the pool with a safety cover when not in use, and one that's not going to fall into the pool um, if a child were to, uh, to come onto it. Um, there is a Swimming Pool Safety Act in New Jersey called Williams Law, and it does require that any pool must be fenced or walled in with a structure at least five feet high and without any openings wide enough for a four inch object to pass through it. If a pool owner fails to properly enclose the water and a child is injured as a result of it, the family may be able to sue under the attractive nuisance doctrine. Um, another common attraction, uh, attractive nuisance uh, piece of equipment are trampolines and playground equipment. Um, so most home playground injuries involve swings, according to the CDC. And so the National Association of Home Inspectors recommend spacing swings at least 24 inches apart and at least 30 inches from the support frame. And if you have such a, a playground equipment, um, you definitely want to check the equipment regularly to make sure that everything is in good working order, that you don't have any wear and tear, that you don't have any warping, that you don't have any rotting going on. Um, and so you also want to make sure that the area where the swing equipment is located is uh, the ground is appropriately covered as well because falls uh, frequently occur with swinging. Um, and then with trampolines, it's the same thing. You want to make sure that everything is in good working order and that a uh, parent or adult is around to monitor the kids to make sure that they don't get stuck, caught, that there's no rips that they can fall through. Um, and just so that they are safe when using that um, because they may not understand how to use a trampoline safety uh, safely. And then home construction pro 
projects are another area because tools and equipment are a great thing for kids to play with or <laughs> if it's a toy um, but because we have uh, those objects as toys frequently now children are able to pick up and understand real life tools but not understand that it's not a toy um, and so you should definitely try to um, secure everything uh, tool wise uh, to make sure that there are no accidental injuries especially with a nail gun or a hammer or anything like that um, and then if there are ladders out or if you are working in an area and there is a hole you know that is definitely something that would be considered an attractive nuisance that would draw a child over there um, so whatever you can do to address that at that area of attractive nuisance and there's a case that was uh, decided recently in the appellate division of new jersey dealing with attractive nuisance on a commercial construction project where the construction companies were sued for not properly securing the site which resulted in a teenager having uh, his leg amputated um, he had jumped off a forklift and the machine had pinned and crushed his leg against a pillar. Um, they determined, the, the appellate division determined that um, the company knew or should have known that minors were likely to trespass. They cited the uh, deposition testimony of the teenagers who had gone on to the site that the construction site was completely open with not even caution tape or plywood blocking their way in, that the keys to the forklift that they were playing with was were in the ignition. The contractor agreed and acknowledged that there was no fence or barricade um, and that their own manual had said that construction sites, and I'm quoting this, construction sites are like oil and water for children and that like iron and a magnet, children are attracted to any type of construction. Experts hired by the uh, child's parents had testified that because the site was in a busy shopping center that it was itself surrounded by a residential neighborhood that barricades and fencing should have been placed. And so the appellate decision ultimately determined that a reasonable fact finder could conclude that the area was insufficiently secured to prevent minors from entering the construction site and the illuminated in construction building. <clears throat> so that case is continuing on with the parents seeking recompense for the injury caused to their child. <coughs> If you believe that your child has been injured as a result of an attractive nuisance and you're located within the state of New Jersey, uh, then this information is particularly relevant to you. And we are happy to uh, speak to you about the incident. Please feel free to give us a call, uh, send us an email, uh, drop us a fax, put a mailing, uh, put a letter in the mail. <laughs> Um, and we'll take a look at it. We'll be happy to, to see if we could be of any assistance. If you are not located in the state of New Jersey, please be advised that the information that I have just provided may not be accurate for the state in which the incident occurred or the state in which you reside. If you believe that you have an attractive nuisance case and you are not located within the state of New Jersey, I strongly recommend that you reach out to competent counsel in the state where the injury occurred or the state where you live to determine what the status of that state's attractive nuisance doctrine is. Um, because the advice and information that I am providing is based upon New Jersey law and New Jersey law only. It should not be taken to be true, even if it might be, uh, uh, for any other state. If you have any questions, concerns, criticisms, or comments, please drop them in the comment section, send us an email, call us, uh, send us a, a letter if you'd like. Um, people do still do that. <laughs> and uh, we will try to respond. If you have a topic that you'd like to hear about, uh, let us know and it might become a video in the future. As always, I'm, my name is Tara McGitz. I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Drinkwater and Goldstein in New Jersey. And I will see you next time.